All right, Coach. Good to see you. Where are you? You look like you're at a quarry. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the Hokie Stone Factory. I'm, I'm just <laughs> chiseling away during the quarantine. I get my little pickaxe and all that and try to. No, I'm in my um. We got an office in our indoor, so I'm just sitting around and uh, shooting the bull. This is where I'm working right now. The indoor has turned into a nice little quarantine uh, bunker for you. It's been awesome. You know, I, I get to rule the roost as far as the uh, the aux cord goes. You blast as long as, as loud as I want, and I can hit golf balls in here. You know, so I, we were just talking about that earlier. It's just uh, I can work on my game, and um, yeah, so it's uh, there's a lot of stuff to do. Uh, keeps gets me out of the house. <laughs> But the music is always something that I follow. Let's put it that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're over there. You guys are social distancing. That's good. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. The music you mentioned right there, that is uh, not a point of contention, but it's a point of competition within your program. <laughs> Explain who controls the music during practice. Uh, I'm, I have been a dictator with it, with the aux cord. And, uh, you know, I try to keep it um, as neutral as I can, I can possibly have it. So, um, you know, sometimes it can be the 80s, sometimes it's the 90s. Um, you know, I, if we have competitions in our practice, oftentimes I'll say the winner gets the aux cord. And so uh, they got to keep it clean, obviously, because uh, you never know when my boss is going to walk in. And uh, I don't want them blushing with some of the stuff that they, they listen to. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, sometimes it's, it's a good um, incentive for, uh, for better practices. <laughs> But if you're choosing right off the top, we're going what country, rock? Uh, yeah, for me, it's I think I've got a little bit uh, Metallica. I've got some ADs. I've got uh, old country. I've got you know, it runs the gambit. But um, yeah, right now I think I was listening to, uh, to Bob Seger live, so uh, I think the, the players would would approve of that. <laughs> We've talked a lot. <laughs> you and I have a lot of the same tastes. I think we come from the same era when it comes to some of that stuff. We do. You can be the guest coach next year, please. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Can I? I don't think I'd want the responsibility of coaching the third. Nah. No. You don't. You don't want coaching that. first, though. That's a pretty easy job. Yeah. Just point to second. <laughs> point to second and clap a couple times, and you're you're good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> well, I could I could go in because you you guys do not do the cheers like some of the other softball programs. We don't. I was telling somebody about that yesterday. Just uh, you can't do it. I don't think I'd last very long if we did that. So, <laughs> I I'll tell you what. I mean, as an assistant, you know, I I didn't coach a base. I was I was the pitch caller, and um, I was never at third base. And my boss would always come in. He was coaching third. He'd be like, "Man, I can't hear." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And now I know. I mean, sometimes they get to third base and it's sitting right by their dugout. And it's just like, man, you can't hear yourself think. So um, sometimes I wear my hood up on purpose just to say my eardrums. <laughs> well, let's talk about in a minute some of the teams that you beat that I, I know do participate in those cheers. Yeah. But what what is... What is, was it like when the season came to a grinding halt? So, not a grinding halt, a sudden halt. You guys were just absolutely rolling right before that stoppage. I mean, I hate to call it crushing, but it had to be. Yeah, it was uh, It was pretty tough. And we played, uh, I think our last game was against George Mason, and there was rumblings that um, that the SEC was, was, you know, halting things. And we ended up winning that game. And on the way home, you know, things were starting to um, – to, to start moving pretty quick and we actually practiced because it was spring break as you know uh, for tech and um, we practiced at I think 10 10 a.m the next morning and uh, had a good practice and uh, at noon uh, the ladies went and lifted weights and um, I think the NCAA came out at like 1 30 and said uh, we're done and I just think I would have liked in a perfect world for me to be the one to relay that news to my players and not it being on Twitter or Instagram you know, so that was the difficult thing. Uh, the next morning we worked, we uh, we met as a team and uh, that was tough, you know, it was really tough and a lot of tears and uh, yeah, and, and, and I had a feeling, we had one senior who's a, a pretty pretty big leader for us in Olivia Latin and uh, that was tough. You know, I had to, I, uh, I, I said my piece to live in front of the team and um, yeah, it was just hard, you know, but she needed to know what I thought about her. The team needed to know what I thought about her and um, you know, I, I didn't know if she was coming back or not nobody did and nobody knew what was going on so it's kind of my uh 
my MO to be a, uh, a steady leader at all times for my players. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't freak out about uncertainty. You know, I just don't, I don't deal with uncertainty. Just give me the facts of what we need to do and, and let me work. And um, at the time we had no answers. So that was the tough part for me is what do you tell these kids? You know, it's just, um, you know, let's just go day by day and see what happens. So uh, thankfully the players got their uh, year of eligibility back, but um, you know, Liv doesn't and uh, you know, she's moving on. So uh, it, it was just a tough, tough situation for everybody. But like I tell, told all the kids, I mean, everybody's in it. I mean, you're in it, you know, uh, all these coaches are in it, our athletic department's in it, every school. I mean, so it's not like we can sit around and feel sorry for us. We just got to make do with what, what we got. Yeah, and you talk about Olivia Latin, and for softball fans, obviously, they're very familiar with her. But for Hokie fans that aren't, just, I mean, absolute ideal representative of the program. And I have no doubt she'll handle it in mature a fashion as possible. There's no positives in, in this, really, Coach, but you only had the one. Uh, right. You know, you can find a positive in that because clearly there's some other softball program, other programs at Tech where it affected well beyond one. Right. Yeah, that's that's the silver lining, I guess, if you call it for our program is um, the nucleus of our of our club is coming back for at least two more years. So at, at one point during the season, we were top 10 in the RPI, you know, so uh, we had it rolling. And now these kids are coming back an, another year older and, um, and, and in the same class. And you just uh, you add in some talented freshmen and we got a transfer. I think we, um, you know, we're going to keep rolling. Coach, you and I spent a lot of time last year. We're driving down to a golf tournament about 10 hours in the car. So we <laughs> broke things down pretty well. And, yeah. the, you know, the public uh, the public view was how are they going to replace Carrie Everly? Because, of course, she was such a, a big piece of things last year. Can you just talk about the job that Keeley, for one, <laughs> did uh, at the top of your rotation, for lack of a better term? Yeah, you know, uh, turnover in a program – happens to every every program so whether it's graduation or um, transfers or whatever injuries your, your squad is not the same every year so uh, you hope that you have the pieces in place that the train keeps rolling as I say you just keep going and Witt says it a lot you know you the train is rolling and hop on you know so that's uh I mean Keeley took the ball this year literally and ran with it and I said you know I told her at the end of last year I said you can pitch more you're going to pitch more regardless if everybody comes back or not. I mean, you look at Keeley's numbers two years ago, and arguably she had the best numbers on our team. And uh, so um, what she did this year was it was pretty pretty fascinating to me because uh, she would she would throw some game a game on Friday. And let's just say UVA, for example, uh, Friday she pitched, Saturday she pitched, and Sunday she was better than Friday and Saturday. And that's just saying something. You know, she got better as the weekends went on. So, um, yeah, she, she, she had, a, had a hell of a year. You guys go down to Clearwater uh, pretty early on in the season. You play five games in four days, all of them against top 25 competition. You win three of them, including knocking off my Minnesota Golden Gophers, who were in the College World Series last year. That was the program I was mentioning I know is prone to the cheering. Uh, what did that uh, stretch of games, that stretch of wins, uh, what did that do for the program just from an internal perspective and also from an external perspective? Well, when the schedule came out uh, in, internally, um, it was, you know, five ranked opponents. And I think the word on the street was Virginia Tech's in trouble. Uh, you got one one pitcher and, you know, let's just see how these Hokies do now, you know. And the first game was tough. And, uh, you know, I, I sat the kids down after that game and I said, for some of these freshmen, it was the biggest game they've ever played in their life. You can say, you know, you played in the state championship and you can say PGF championships and all this, but there's a million people watching you, you know? So it was, it was, it was natural to feel nervous. And once I said that, I think there was just a weight that just uh, lifted off the kids and the crowds didn't really matter after that. And uh, we just went out and played. And uh, at the end of the, the weekend, you know, you're three and two, um, very easily could have been four and one. It's just like, yeah, I, I told the kids, I said, the country slept on us after the graduations and, and the departures from last year. The country, you know, we weren't ranked. I said, you're going to be ranked now. We're back. And we should have never left. You know, so I, I kind of used that as motivation as, uh, you know, we became what we needed to do, did what we needed to do. And, uh, you know, we, we got put back on the map 
when we shouldn't have left the map, you know? So um, I was proud of them. You know, it was, it was a weekend. It was a hard weekend. People don't realize that it's, it was, it was, it was five games in four days, but when they're games with that much intensity, it's like, I, I think I slept the whole way home, you know, just like <laughs> I told the girls out to Northwestern because that was a hard fought game. I think I almost got tossed that game. And uh, there was a play in left field. I thought we got hosed on and, and I let the umpires know it. And uh, I just, after the game, I was like, girls, I don't really have much to say to you other than I'm proud of the way you played this weekend. And I feel like a Mack truck hit me, you know, just like every play meant something. And that's, that's where the program's going. You know, it's just, uh, those are the kind of games we've got to go to, and that's the kind of games we've got to play. So um, that was a fun weekend. Pete, you and I uh, have become friends because you've rapidly become one of my favorite coaches <laughs> at Virginia Tech because you're, you're straightforward. I remember emceeing your, your first banquet here before the season, not this uh, previous season, but the season prior, your first year. Uh, and I was kind of taken aback because I said, Coach, are you going to win in the ACC? And you said, yeah, absolutely, and here's how we're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, i, I got to re reply on that. I mean, it's – my goals for the year is, is you try to finish top three, you know, and I've always said that. So it's like, and I remember you asking me that question and was like, yeah, I mean, I, I hope to be here. You don't come here to lose, but it's not, you can't be braggadocious about it either. I don't go in saying we're going to win the ACC. There's some teams that don't make the regionals and they're like, we're going to the world series. Come on. I mean, it's like, so to win, we were fortunate enough to win the coastal last year and you know, it's, you look back and there's one or two plays that happen within that year. And let's just say a ball goes different at, at NC State, you lose that game. Or you play, uh, nor, um, let's just say, Pitt, and they, they clip you. And now you are you don't win the season. You don't win the conference. You don't win the Coastal. Is that a unsuccessful year? No. But you finish maybe third. So I never say we're going to win anything. It's we're going to go and we're going to compete and we're going to try to be top three. That's our goal. But um, – yeah, I mean, there's, I don't like coach speak. I think you could tell that. And, and so I've, I've kind of, I'm really diligent and, and I try to monitor what I say so I don't get in trouble. Um, Cause there's, you do. coach speak keeps you, it keeps you in a lane, man. Coach speak keeps you right down the line. But I just don't, I mean, as a, as a fan, I don't like listening to that kind of stuff. And so I just say what I want within reason, Lays. Yeah, I know, absolutely. With it, <laughs> but I mean, the question I was going like to say, but. the question there, the question I was going to ask though is, uh, have you started to see? It seemed like it was relatively immediate that that personality has infected the program, and they kind of play with that straightforward mentality, like we're here to win, we're not yeah. apologizing about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, we try to do. We, we're going to play the right way, but we're going to play hard and. Um, I'll tell you an interesting story. We, we went to play uh, UVA this year and we played them Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we left Friday morning and we get to the stadium. We got a new stadium. It's we're all checking things out. And um, there was some shuffling in the dugout. And I said, what's going on? And we left our bats in Blacksburg. <laughs> so here's our opening weekend in the ACC against arguably our biggest rival. And we don't have our bats. So uh, I, I ask around and nobody's freaking out really. Olivia was mad. I give her that. She was mad. But the rest of them were kind of looking to me to see how mad I was going to get. And I said, girls, do we have any bats? Do we have any wood? Or what do we got here? Yeah, we got our bats. We got, some, we got about seven bats from last year. And I said, line them up. And let's test them and see where it goes. And there was no freaking out. It was just almost like, all right, we got our bats. Let's go get them. You know, and, and, and so if, if, you're, if you're not, don't have the mindset we typically have, it's like, uh-oh, we don't have our bats. We're in trouble. No, it's just it's just good. Just to do what we do, you know, and um, that was a that was a big uh, turning, not a turning point, but it was a big uh, just example of how the program operates, I guess. And as it turned out, UVA didn't have their bats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> question, <laughs> Oh man, I set you up. I set you up on a T. <laughs> See, this is the long-awaited and highly anticipated Demore Laser podcast. Yeah, yeah, you never know what you're gonna get. It's like well, Lewis and uh, what's the other one? <laughs> Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. Dean Martin. Yeah, <laughs> Evan Costello. The problem, the problem is neither of us is Dean Martin. No, no, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, 
one of the other things that we talked about back at that banquet before your first season was uh, just the art of hitting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, many of the returning uh, ladies, you know, just had breakout seasons in their first season. Offensively, we talk a lot about the pitching because they've had such dominant numbers, but offensively, this team has really become consistent top to bottom in the lineup, hasn't it? Yeah, one through nine, we can really swing it. And um, I think we, we, we hit 31 home runs this year, and uh, that was a lot, but it's, it, it, it's kind of deceptive because, um, you know, one of our tournaments was at Jacksonville, and the, the wind was just blowing straight in 20 miles an hour. So you sit there, and you're like, man, that would have been gone. That would have been gone. That would have been gone. But it's like you can't sleep on our lineup. You just can't. So um, – it's just one of the, uh, you know, if everybody can swing it, there's no easy outs. That's it's a hard thing for other pitchers to to try to combat. As in terms of the program right now, I know you've had conversations with Olivia, of course, about what her future is going to be. Uh, what has that been like in terms of staying in communication with the girls and where they are and making sure they're safe? And when we do get rolling, which is an inevitability again, that you're in the strongest position possible. Yeah, I. I uh, they have workouts at home right now and I have gave them uh, some hitting plans, just general ideas. And that's the one thing for us over the summer, which I think this is an extended summer break for us is I don't do a lot because we play so much that at the end of the summer, um, players just rest, you know? So right now um, I'm not telling them a lot to do. I, I, I usually check in with all the players once every week and a half and, and I'll text them and say, how you doing? And, um, it's usually not anything softball related. Just uh, just want to see how they're doing and staying safe and um, that kind of thing. So um, we don't do a lot. We did a Zoom call middle of April and uh, just checking in, see how everybody's doing. And Dr. Bennett was on there. We did some exercises sports psychology wise. So um, yeah, we haven't really done much, but I check in with them individually when I can. Pete, how fun has it been for you uh, that Virginia Tech softball rapidly has become a conversation point again locally? You know, you go around town, and people are like, do you see how they did today? You know, yeah. just doing down in Florida, things like that. That happened in a hurry, which was pretty cool. Yeah, I love it. Um, you know, I just, my, my thing is I just hope to be a good ambassador for what Virginia Tech stands for. You know, and, and when, when, team, when people watch our team play, they're like, man, you guys play hard, you play right. Um, you know, and, and you win, knock on wood. So uh, I just hope we're, we're good ambassadors, but uh, I'm proud of the players, you know, they, they bought in right away and, 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 it, and it's kind of confirmation for me is, you know, if you're, if you're an assistant at Missouri and I was there for 10 years, we made 10 regionals, you know, really successful. And so it's like, yeah, but he's the, he's the assistant, you know, how much he's bringing good players in, but how much is he really doing? And that was the knock on me because I was an assistant for so long. And then I went to Kennesaw and we kind of got things rolling down there. And uh, yeah, but you know, it's Kennesaw and the league's not very good, which it wasn't true. And then you come here and, and we're doing pretty well. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful. But at the same time, when, when the bar gets raised, I got to raise the bar too because, you know, people are coming after us now. So it's, it was something you could sneak up on people the first year. You had this good pitching and you had good hitters, but now people are chasing you. And so... Um, that's the, that's the one the one thing I need to do is just step up my game and, um, and continue to get better. Well, we have no doubt that you will, and that's softball wise. A golf game seems like it's a little bit in disarray right now. Yeah, it is. It is. Unfortunately. <laughs> What's yeah. going on? Miss? Uh, I can't find the, the center of the, my irons. It's just crazy. And you've been to, you've been to the Blacksburg Country Club. I was on uh, on on seven about two weeks ago on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon and um, I was playing with a bunch of people and, and I just shanked the crap out of it over the sixth green, almost killed somebody. And I was just like, my God, this sucks. <laughs> so I quit at nine, I was done. And uh, I told Dr. B, I said, I can't do it. I'm gonna embarrass myself. And uh, I don't think I've gone out since. So um, just finding the club, head, club face has uh, been a problem for me. I don't know what it is. So if uh, you got any lessons for me, let me know. Did you see my, um, my squirrel hunt? on Twitter. I didn't. Yeah, so I went through uh, campus and tried to find as many squirrels as I could get, and that was uh, that was a hit. Working on my golf game, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to stay sane right now. <clears throat> I don't know if I was uh, sane before. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You had a different baseline to begin with. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Well, Pete, it's always fun hanging out with you, man, whether it's on camera or off. Uh, thanks for taking a few minutes. Good to see that you're safe and sound and uh, stay that way, all right? Thanks, Lays. Good talk to you, buddy. Pete DeVore joining us on Duncan Take It Out.